Welcome to Unbreakable Latina. Hi guys, welcome back to Unbreakable Latina. This is your host Melina. I hope you're having an amazing day, whatever day you're listening to this on. I'm recording on Sunday. It's almost five o'clock. I laid in bed for like two hours and I actually took a nap, which is really not like me. And I'm like, am I sick? But no, your girl has been living life and just doing a bunch of stuff and it caught up to me. I now I get why people take naps because I have never been a napper, but I think it's because I always make sure to prioritize my sleep. But lately I've been living life and definitely not prioritizing my sleep, but I've made some good memories. So last week on Sunday, I hung out with my mom and my sister, went to Marshall's. We went to Panini Kebab, which is one of my favorite restaurants. I love Mediterranean food. So we hung out before my mom left to Hawaii, took her to my brother's house because they were going and then hung out there for a little bit. Y la noche, um, I ended up going out for a night in the town and (laughs) I got home at two in the morning. Then I got in bed and I was like uploading the podcast, I half asleep. So I was hoping that I uploaded it fine. So I know a lot of people listen because they work night shifts and they were all like, hey, where's your podcast? But I apologize. Your girl was just living. And then the next morning I had to wake up early. Amanda and I went to get massages. If you've never had a Thai massage, I suggest you get it. And don't go expecting to feel amazing. Like, oh my God, it's going to it's gonna be so good. It's going to be so relaxing. It's actually pretty painful. They walk on your back. They had me doing... They ha- The lady had me just like... She thought I was an origami piece. <laughs> she just had me like all twisted. My knee was like backwards. And then my leg was going over my head. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but they do do some really flexible movements on your body that when you're there you think to yourself I cannot do this there was a point where I believe she was either had her forearm or her knee on my inner thighs and it was pretty painful she asked me what my problematic area was and it's always my shoulder and my neck because I like whipping my hair back and forth (laughs) no I think I sleep very terribly And she was just going hard at my shoulders and neck. And I was almost in tears of how many knots there is there. So she told me that I should do cupping. So I think I'm going to try that next time. And I need to go to get massages more often because I don't know how bad my knots were. Like, I mean, every time I go get a pedicure or like I massage my own neck, I always feel them. But I didn't realize how bad they were. Like, she was going really hard on them. And I tipped my girl well because she really was trying to get rid of every knot. And I appreciated her so much. And then after the little massage, they give you a tea with some crackers. And you feel like if we still un lugar en el espacio y viniste para atrás. Because it's like an out-of-body experience. Like, if you haven't done it, treat yourself because it is so worth it. I do this like once a year and I always say every time I go, I say I'm going to do it more, but I forget about it. These past two weeks have been three day weekends for me and they've been amazing and I feel so much happier. And I'm hoping that this happiness is not only because I've had three day weekends, but it's because, you know, I'm staying on top of my Pilates game. I just been eating healthier. I've been truly feeling happy. And it's been a while since I felt this chipper because last year was a little roller coaster for me. But we'll see how this week goes. I do feel like having the three day weekend allows me to not only like do my laundry, do everything for the podcast and then hang out with my friends and my family. It gives me so much time. But overall, I had a great week and then I did a giveaway for the beanies. The beanies are selling out really fast. So if you want to get your hands on them, order yours today. I believe there's only like 20 left. I'm not going to restock. So get yours while supplies last. I know you guys want tote bags. I've heard that so many times. Let me know if you want tote bags that 
have just Unbreakable Latina podcast, like the old ones that I did before? Or do you guys want one with like Chiona Pero Chingona or a saying that I say? I'll put that on the a question on this episode on Spotify so you guys could answer. Let me know what type of tote bags you want. I really love the tote bag that I did. I use it for everything because it's so big. I shove a bunch of stuff in there, especially when I go to the post office to mail out merch or just go return my stuff at Amazon. It's really practical. It's not a small tote bag. It's a pretty large one. You can use it for your groceries. You can use it for anything, basically. Even for school. I've seen some people use it for school. But let me know what kind of tote bags you guys want. Today, my little sister, Roxy, she ran a half marathon. And we went to go see her and just cheer on for her. It was really inspiring to see everybody like finish um and I think I'm going to start running. I know everyone's doing it and I want to do it too. I want to be cool. I want to start my running girl era. I'm going to start off slow. My brother's done triathlons. My sister, this is her second like race that she's done. But I don't know. It's inspiring. And I think that running is going to help my fitness journey just get better. So if you see me running go cheer me on. If you don't see me running, make me run. (laughs) So on this week's episode, I wanted to talk about showing up for yourself and how important it is. I think it's so easy for us to show up for our family members, for our significant others, for your friends, but we truly sometimes forget about ourselves and put ourselves kind of last. I felt the need to talk about this because just observing my sister go through this training of a half marathon and just showing up for herself and staying committed and determined to accomplish this goal and just seeing her do it was truly inspiring and just reflecting back onto my self-love healing journey I finally showed up for myself in a lot of ways And my life completely turned around. As a recovering people pleaser, I think this was such a challenge for me to learn to show up for myself first before I show up for anybody. Because if you follow me for a long time, you know that I'm a recovering people pleaser. And I used to always put everyone's needs before mine because it was important for me to show up for them. And then sometimes I would leave myself on the back burner. Oh, it's not that serious. Like, I'll get it done another day. Or um, let me cancel my workout class because somebody needs me to do something. Or let me change my schedule because someone decided to throw an event, but I already had plans. When I learned to show up for myself before anybody else, I feel like I became happier. When you show up for yourself, you're committing to your goals, your desires, you're putting yourself first no matter what. And I think it's important to put yourself first before you can show up for anybody else. Because I know there's times where I've put other people before myself and then I felt resentment and I felt unhappy. So, If you're feeling like that, maybe it's time that you prioritize yourself. If you struggle with putting yourself first and showing up for yourself, think about it this way. Why do you show up for others? For me, I show up for others to know that they are loved, to know that I admire them, that I care for them, that I want them to feel supported so think about it this way show for yourself because you want to show yourself love because you want to show yourself support you want to show yourself motivation and just being your own biggest cheerleader i'm pretty sure if you've taken a workout class there's always like the moment where you're suffering because you're planking or you're doing like a hard workout and then the instructor or the coach tells you like you show up for yourself today like thank yourself for showing up and when you think about that when you're dying like for me it's when I'm planking in Pilates and the instructor is all trying to motivate us and say like you showed up for yourself today be proud of you when you start applying that to life it is a shift in your life that you didn't know you needed. So how are we going to start showing up for ourselves? So the first step is thinking, writing down your goals, making a vision board. What are your goals for this year, for the next few months? 
my vision board has helped me so much and a lot of people make fun of it because I used to be that person that made fun of people with vision boards. I'm like, that is not even true. But when you visualize or when you write down what your goals are, they start becoming reality because I feel like once you write something down or you have like a visual aid, it's something that gets stuck in your head. I don't know what it is. I know there's research to this, I'm sure, because if you write stuff down, like for me, when I write notes, I remember things. Showing up for yourself also means doing things that you like to do, something that you're passionate about, something, a hobby that you like to do. For me, my hobby, my passion, (laughs) besides podcasting, is thrifting. I get such a serotonin boost out of thrifting. It makes me happy. I think that's like my fun thing to do. It might not be everyone's cup of tea. A lot of people are like, ew, I can't believe you wear stuff in the thrift store. But... I be styling so (laughs) so find a hobby or a passion project that makes you happy that boosts that serotonin don't wait for anyone to go do that with you if it's like a painting class go do one on your own I know it's kind of scary to go out on your own but if you've been waiting for people to do these hobbies with you and you don't do them because you don't want to do them alone like stop waiting for people just go for yourself get that little serotonin boost showing up for yourself can also mean slowing down it doesn't always have to be like you have to do this this that listen to your feelings listen to your body i know for me when I actually start listening to my body, for example, there's been days where I absolutely do not want to go work out. I absolutely just want to lay down, watch some Love is Blind and get disappointed by men while I watch it. I'm just kidding. (laughs) But seriously, like there's been days where I don't want to do anything and my body is telling me no. My mind is saying, yeah, get up, go work out. Sometimes you just got to reset I know for me, when I socialize so much, like for this whole week, I socialize way too much. So Friday when I got home, I was just like, I'm just going to go to sleep. So I went to sleep at seven and I felt like a new person the next day. So listen to your body, show up for yourself by acknowledging how you're feeling. If you're feeling tired, take that nap. If you're feeling um, sad, cry it out. Listen to what your body is telling you and cater to it don't forget that dreams don't happen from one day to the other and if you have goals dreams if you work a little bit every day you're one step closer to getting there I feel like for me it's been hard to someone asked me the other day actually how do you balance everything I don't I have never found the balance but I have learned that if I do one small thing every day it gets me closer to the goal Now, if I'm not even working on anything for the podcast and I have all these things that I want to do, but I'm not putting effort, then I'm not showing up for myself. I'm just putting it on the back burner. But if it was someone else, like my sister asked me to do something, I'd be there. I do it. So make sure you remember that dreams and goals don't happen overnight. It takes every day a little bit of work, no matter how small it is. Just keep moving and you'll get there one day. I used to be the type of person that would overcommit to different things at work or at home or if someone asked me to do a favor and I would get burnt out. So make sure that you are not getting burned out and not overcommitting and taking some time for yourself to rest. It's been so hard for me to learn how to rest, but I think I finally am doing good. Like earlier, I took a two hour laying down on my bed I took like an like an hour nap and it felt so good I felt recharged and could I have been doing so many other things yes I have a lot to do I have to put my laundry away right now I have to plan my birthday trip I have to mail out some beanies but I decided to take some time for myself because I knew if I didn't I was going to be moody and in a bad mood and I'm not going to want to record the podcast so make sure you're not burning yourself out and you're not over committing to different things Showing up for yourself also means challenging those negative thoughts and not talking to yourself so crappy. I myself have struggled in the last few months with negative self-talk and I think um, the this year I've actually been way better about it but I had shared before that I, I gained weight and I wasn't feeling so hot about myself and like my clothes wasn't fitting 
So I was just like, oh my God, I can't believe I let myself go. And I got too caught up in all these things. And now that I've been prioritizing like movement and just appreciating my body and being thankful after being sick too, it just gives you a new appreciation for like nourishing your body and moving and just appreciating who you are, what you look like in this moment. There's always room for improvement, but talking negatively did not get me anywhere. If anything, it just got me in a deeper hole where I was just like, oh my God, I hate how I look. Like I don't want to look at myself in the mirror. And I'm just being real with you guys. I I struggle with that. I've always struggled with that. I think we all do, especially with social media. It's so hard to look away. All these Olympic queens um, making us feel like, oh my God, like how they lost weight so fast. But we don't know what's behind their journey. We don't know what they're going through. Some people could be sick. So it's not always about weight, but I'm just sharing like this is one self-talk like negatively that I do or I'll share another one. Sometimes I'm like, ah, my podcast is not even that good. And then I catch myself, I'm like, what is wrong with you? You wouldn't tell that to someone you love. So make sure that that you remember that showing up for yourself is an act of self-love. And it's not nice to be mean to yourself because you wouldn't do that to someone you love. Showing up for yourself means self-care. I always prioritize my self-care. I shave my mustache all the time. (laughs) No, but seriously, like I do my eyebrows. I get my, like, it doesn't always have to be beauty, but you could do yourself like something that you like to do, like a bed night routine, a fitness routine. It could be reading a self-help book. It could be literally anything. Just make sure you take time for yourself and you remain consistent with self-care. Make sure to move your body. You're showing up for yourself by moving your body because there's so many benefits to going on pinchy mental health walks or even taking the stairs it boosts your self-esteem increases your energy levels it reduces stress for me i work in an office all day so getting out and walking or doing some sort of activity a workout class or going to the gym really improves my mental health if i don't do those things i feel stressed i feel like my life sucks i know it's dark but i feel that way and i think our bodies are just meant to move so if you need to find a way to incorporate some movement if you work like me a desk job where you're sitting like 90 percent of the time then find a way to move your body if that means maybe doing a little zumba on youtube or a little stretch anything will help so show up for yourself by moving that body you also have to let go of perfectionism you have to let go of the fact that some days you're gonna be great and you're gonna go on your walks you're gonna achieve a goal and then some days you're gonna run in your bed and it's not gonna be great but the important part is that you pick yourself up and you treat yourself like someone you love when you show up for yourself trust me your life is gonna change don't forget to be your biggest cheerleader i hope that you guys enjoyed today episode like I enjoyed recording I think it's perfect for the start of the week just motivating and I feel motivated today as well and I'm gonna start my little running journey so follow me on my running journey no but really um I have noticed that me showing up to Pilates I know I've made Pilates like my second personality but I feel stronger. I feel stronger. Like I see the growth. I see how difficult it used to be in the beginning. It's still hard. I think I might try a level 1.5 class, but I did bar the other day and I thought I was going to do worse than I did. And when I really enjoyed it, I got a good sweat on. So you staying consistent is really going to show up. Um, You'll start noticing other people have like complimented me like, oh, wow, like you've been really going hard at Pilates and this. And I don't know, it just keeps me motivated to hear it from other people and then to see myself like the strength that has built in these last few months. And when I start running, it's all over for everybody. No, I'm just kidding. But I hope you guys have an amazing week. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. Order your beanies because I right, when I was recording, I just sold two more. So there's like 18 left now. And you can find them at www.unbreakablelatina.com. Don't forget to tell me about the tote bags and rate, review, and subscribe. Follow me at Unbreakable Latina on TikTok and Instagram. And I hope you guys have an amazing week. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.